Good evening, friends, and here is the first ever episode of Shooting the Shit here on the Loudmouth MMA Network. Uh, I am your host, Riley Contek. Uh, you may know me from other shows, specifically on Monday. Uh, this show is going to be a little bit more off the chart. Uh, just give you a little update um, because, you know, this is the first show. This show, we don't want to be too focused on MMA. We want to talk about everyday life. I, you know, fighters are more than just fighters. So we're going to talk to them about things in their life and, you know, things that go on with them as fighters. And then in the last 10 minutes, we'll talk about what's going on in MMA right now. Uh, so we'll try to keep this under 30 minutes. Uh, my first guest today, and of course, I've written a joke, uh, which is probably <laughs> going to fall on uh, deaf ears. But uh, my first guest, I'm really excited. Uh, she is a women's MMA pioneer, a former Invicta women's champion, um, a UFC veteran. Um, I tried having Barb Honchak on the show. She couldn't be here tonight. So instead, we have Tanya Evinger. Uh, Tanya, <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Uh, it's good to hear. I, I, obviously, that's just a joke. Um, you know, uh, Tanya, I've been following your career for a long time. You're, you're a great fighter. Uh, you're a great personality, too. Um, you know, and I actually met you a couple times at the Invicta events. We've had, we've shared a few drinks and a few laughs. Uh, might, right. might look a little different. I used to have a red beard. Uh, I shaved it off this week. Um, but, uh, it was just funny cause I used to, you used to tell people I was your cousin after the fights we'd be drinking at the hotel. You'd be telling people I was your cousin and, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, it was funny and we'd have a few drinks. So, um, you know, how, how and, then, and this is kind of the interesting thing with, you know, I was trying to talk about this before, um, you know. Obviously, after fights, you know, you were bound to have a few drinks, you know. Um, but, you know, as a fighter, and this is something I want to ask a few fighters, like, during a fight camp, when you're building up to a fight camp, um, what, what, is, what is the situation with drinking and partying? Do you put it off until the fight's over and then just go wild afterwards? Or do you not care? You can, you can, you can balance partying and training and before a fight. Uh, well, for me, I can't make weight if I'm partying, so... I absolutely still go to the bar, but it's usually uh, me being the DD at this point. But uh, yeah, there's no way, no way I could make weight if I was drinking. Uh, that's that's really interesting to hear because as we you know, we kind of talked a little bit before the recording started. Um, there's 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 two sides of this coin. There's a, there's some fighters who uh, like you do not absolutely will not drink at all, but there's also fighters. Uh, that drink throughout camp just like it's normal. The two that I'm going to say, I know Chuck Liddell, who's a legendary. Oh player. yeah, yeah, he, he <laughs> was a guy that I don't think gave a shit at all and drank. You know, dude, I used to be at clubs. We'd be out of town for a UFC event or something, and I'd be at a club, and his ass would be there drinking, and he's fighting the next day, like the main event. I'm like, what the fuck, Chuck? <laughs> yeah, he, <laughs> he'd have like a drink in each hand. I'm like, you're so crazy. Yeah, he clearly didn't give a shit, and you know, nah. I guess if you're that good, I guess you know. I mean, he was at the top of the world for a few years there. Um, yeah. But then I always think of, and this is kind of the opposite side of the coin, Cody McKenzie. If you remember Cody McKenzie, the king of the guillotine joke, um, he I think used to drink up until the day of before weigh-ins. And he said, I like to get blackout drunk before the weigh-ins because it helped me lose the extra few pounds uh, going into the weight cut, which I thought was a little interesting. But, I mean, I always weigh less after a good weekend of drinking, so maybe he's right. Well, yeah, I mean, it's probably just going right through him and then he's getting dehydrated. But I cut a lot more weight maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it depends. He's fought in a few weight classes. And also, yeah. he, uh, he wasn't the most successful fighter, so maybe that, was, uh, <laughs> maybe that, back, maybe that backfired a little bit. Yeah. So, uh, that's interesting. So, like, afterwards, you know, in terms of your partying and your drinking, the minute the fight's over, is it just, like, you get to the locker room and you just start popping bottles? Or, well, how does that work? Man, I usually can't, like, I don't, I ain't even trying to drink any alcohol afterwards. And usually, like, I'm sick for, like, an hour or two. And then the rest of the night, I won't be feeling good. But uh, smoking, I'll smoke. <laughs> oh, there you like, go. right after, sometimes during the Invicta fights, all my friends would be there and my cornerman, everybody, and everybody smoked. So they'd be like, hey, before you go to the interviews, let's go out and smoke this blunt. And I'm like, all right. And I haven't smoked the whole camp. I'll quit smoking too. Right. And then um, I go out there and smoke and I'm so stoned for my interview. I remember Invicta interviews. I didn't know what the hell. we They'd have us there till like one in the morning doing interviews. And I didn't even know what I was saying or I don't know. But that that's like uh, pretty much it. I usually don't drink for, for a day or so. I just... Don't feel right. 
Yeah, I was going to say, the, the time I had a few drinks with you, you were not on the card. You were just there, I think, as a guest. So you were there. Yeah, the and that's card. probably why I don't remember all that time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was, uh, I was uh, not in the mood or not in the uh, right state of mind myself. So yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I, was, I, I got to the bar and I was putting the belts on and yeah, I, was, I was out of control. But yeah, um, that is kind of funny you say that. I'm not going to name any names, but uh, I went to one of the earlier Invicta events in Iowa. And um, I had the hotel at the Fighters Hotel, and I'm checking in, and I walk past the hallway to get to my room, and the door is cracked open, and I see three or four corner men with the fighter in, like, a big, like, that 70s show doobie circle. And yeah. they're just going to town. You can smell it in the hallway. And I'm just like, how are they getting away with this, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, 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 how do you get away with that? Because I, I would assume the UFC doesn't have, you know, as strict I – mean, they would probably have the strictest drug protocol, whereas – No, UFC doesn't. doesn't give a shit about weed. That's the main thing. Everything else, performance enhancing, yeah, you're going to get it. But sure. weed, they don't give a shit about. And that was the difference. Like in smaller promotions, they would test you, and then you're based off of the commission's test instead of like USADA or something. So, I mean, you see, like, people getting suspended. Like, I think Jessica I got suspended in Texas for having, like, traces or whatever. Yeah. And that was – it was just bullshit. But, uh, you know, I think if USADA okays it and, and says it's fine, I, I, I really don't see – it's not performance enhancing. I just don't understand. Is the, is I mean, issue, people are getting – People are getting high right before they, work, I mean, fight. I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Is the is you know, the issue? Do you think that that there is a pain killing kind of remedy to it? Because that's kind of what I I feel like some people have said that using weed is kind of like a pain kill, like not not like you're taking like opium or anything. I like remember that. when they said that about Nate or Nick when he went and fought in Japan and one dude bullshit. I don't I don't give a shit who you are. I think it sucks. I like, I'm not the one that can like smoke and go in and train. Yeah. I can't go in and spar. I'm slow. I'm like, good God. I'm like, holy shit. Why did I smoke today? Is like everybody showed up for sparring all of a sudden. Or like I go in there, but it's like, yeah, let's smoke before we grapple. We'll get like all these ideas and like start flowing and shit. And I'm like, dude, I'm a uh, total dipshit when I smoke. So <laughs> just doesn't help at all. Yeah. No, 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 not yeah. at all. So, I mean, I'm just. Um, and it's weird because, like, you know, you don't really hear much about people getting popped for hard drugs either. I think the only one I can remember is cocaine and John Jones, and that's basically the extent of it. I haven't heard anything further than that. I don't, I don't think they really give a shit what you're doing uh, outside of performance-enhancing drugs, as long as it ain't within the fight week or the fight, like, I guess you're uh, – I guess what it starts is, like uh, – um, the night, I guess, a weigh-ins maybe yeah. is where when our time starts, and then at our last drug test if after we're done with the fight or or whatever, you know, that's the that's our time period that we have to have certain things have to be like legit and in line and on point, you know. But other than that, I don't really think they give a shit if you're doing like, you know, your little party drugs here and there. Yeah, I was, I was always thinking it'd be funny if someone, like, got disqualified from a win, if they, like, got caught for, like, mushrooms or something. You'd be like, is that yeah, really, right? is that really gonna help <laughs> Get a little too many mushrooms this camp. <laughs> you'd be like, yeah, you'd think he was fighting, like, a dragon or something, you know? Yeah, we would, I remember fighting out in California back in, like, shit, like, 2004, 2005, and, um... We would go down to Mexico right over the border to Tijuana and fight a bunch of our guys. So we would drive down there in San Diego, and then we'd all, like, drive over and walk across the border, and all these guys would fight and shit. Man, those dudes would be, like, this was back in the day. They'd take ecstasy and all kinds yeah. of shit. They'd be fighting on ecstasy. I'm like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> y'all are not. You guys are literally just going down here to have fun and try new shit out because this ain't, you ain't taking this serious. But half the time, they wouldn't even get paid, like. Oh yeah, they they would really get fucked over down there. So oh yeah, that that sounds if you're if you're talking like Tijuana, that sounds yeah shady. yeah, it sounds shady it was in the shady. first place. Yeah, for yeah, sure. it was shady. Uh, so moving on from the drinking and the drugs, because I mean we could talk yeah. about. I'm sure we're gonna have two full shows of that, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, I hate to talk about it, but I'm always interested, especially in what professional athletes do during this time. I know if I was I was an amateur athlete for many years, but uh, you know I was never a pro, but I still kind of kept with the lifestyle. You know, COVID-19, and I, I don't want to talk about very long. I just want to kind of get your idea of what's going on. How, you know, how has that affected what your your daily regiment is? I mean, is it – I mean, obviously a lot of – I think all gyms are closed. I know that my gym is closed. Um, how has it affected kind of your daily training routine? How has it affected what you do on the weekends, what you do after you leave the gym? Like, how what have you been up to? Uh, man, I've just been working. I, I – literally got a hold of the coaches i just moved to 
uh, St. Louis, what, two months ago, literally right before all this shit happened. Oh, yeah. And I get a hold of the coaches and I say, hey, I want to come in. Uh, obviously, it was right before the shutdown. I was like, hey, I want to come in as soon as this crap's over with. And I thought it was going to be like a week or two. And here we are. Yeah. I'm like, fuck, man. I, I just, I'm not such a believer in everything that's going on. So, you know, I call bullshit on a lot of stuff. Obviously, I think there's a virus, but do I think it's pandemic now? Do I think all this crazy stuff now? So I, I would absolutely go to the gym right now and you know i just it's not open sucks right. and then the fighting i mean i wanted to fight this summer but i just think that with backed up all the fights backed up in the fighters and yeah. i don't know what everybody's gonna do if you know like are they just gonna try to put them fighters forward or are they gonna just kind of like trash everything they the plans wise and and start making cards you know from scratch again or what's going on so right and hey, listen you're not the only one i get a lot of shit for saying a lot of stuff about what's going on right now i think a lot of it's bullshit mm -hmm. um and and i don't want to get super into it because i i promised the overlords at loudmouth mma i wouldn't talk politics religion all this other shit so yeah, yeah i'm gonna keep to my plans but uh yeah. yeah it's it's bullshit you know i've had to find ways to try and stay you know stay in shape and you know uh you know and yeah, i just it's 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 well i'm just, like i moved to san st louis me and my girl i gotta look you know in shape yeah summer's coming <laughs> we're trying to pull some hot bitches and so i'm like i gotta really get my game together you know i got the personality and shit but uh <laughs> the looks the looks is where i'm lacking so i gotta be in good shape uh, so is. then uh then uh i don't know i can't even work out when i get here and it's I don't know. I'm not a runner. It's bad. Me neither. No. no I, 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 yeah. Listen, I played sports my whole life. It's amazing how much I hate running for how many sports I actually run. Yeah, and, and me too. Me too. It's like basketball. They're like, how are you in track? I'm like, I do all field events. Right, right. <laughs> no, I know. It's, you know, I have the same thing. First off, you know, I, I don't have a beach body, um, but I would like to look as decent as possible. And you know, still being a five, maybe a six on a good day with a you mm -hmm. know, with a with a seven personality and a four belly, I think I'd be okay. But now, <laughs> now it's like a three two belly. My personality's yeah. still okay, but I'm a little more hyper because I'm stuck indoors. So I'm really yeah, yeah. This summer, yeah. Been, you know, content. and you shaved your beard, so ah, uh, dude, I look like a child right now. It's horrible. You look like a whole new person. If it, if. If well, we don't show video on the other podcast, but I had a gunslinger mustache before this because I got bored and I just started shaving shit into my face. So I, yeah. I kind of looked like a half fruity like Doc Holiday. So yeah, when you shaved off, you should have went through all these different dudes yeah. like the girls do with their hair. Yeah, I don't know if that would have worked. <laughs> They're gonna shave their heads so they want to do every dike cut they can do before they <laughs> like the Britney before Spears, they shave it clean off. The Britney Spears in her yeah, uh, yeah, don't yeah. know what I'm doing anymore face. Yeah. yeah the yeah. undercut, the <laughs> moa, everything. They gotta do every dike cut out there. Yeah, I, I have a dike cut myself, but I'm a dude. So I think I'm okay. <laughs> Yours is only waist down though. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's go with that. Uh, uh, so anyways, we'll get away from the COVID-19 because nothing makes me want to throw punches at uh, people who just listen to the news too much than that. <laughs> so, um, so I guess a big question is, and I think you kind of answered it. I wasn't trying to get an exclusive today, but, you know, I was going to ask, but I think you kind of answered it. Are you still a professional MMA fighter? Are you still going to be active? I, I'm sure a lot of people want me to quit. They're tired of watching me, and uh, they all think I suck after Not the last me. two fights. But, man, I just got my leg. It, like, people don't understand how bad an injury I had. Mm -hmm. And it's coming back just – it was a fucked position I was in. You know, like, I either don't fight and recover more and then don't make money that whole time because I obviously wasn't working during that time. I had my leg in a straight brace. I had, like, fucking rough. It was rough. So for the and viewers I that don't know, what was the exact injury? Um, I just got my leg broken in half, so I tore my ACL, MCL, LCL. Blew my meniscus and oh, wow. broke my tibia in half. Oh wow! And was that so? Dude, the... the dude literally broke my leg in half, and I landed on my own ankle on my hip. How did that happen? Broken half. Uh, just some dumb shit in the gym, and uh, you know, I fired my coaches over this shit. Um, mm -hmm. I it shouldn't happen, and he had me pinned up against. He was just too big, and and just it was like an ego thing or something. I don't know. He like just broke me, broke my body in half, had me pinned up against cage, blocked my leg, and just literally broke me over on my own leg it was yeah, the craziest pretty, shit ever pretty fucked up. but it hurt so i think like i was in a fucked up place where i hadn't worked and i wanted to fight but i wasn't there mm -hmm. but i don't have no choices so ufc mm -hmm. says you know six months after my second 
surgery, they're like, hey, we got this fight. I can't turn it. How can you turn it down? What am I, yeah. what have I been doing for the whole year trying to heal from this injury? I can't like, I can't turn shit down. And then, you know, I don't, I also don't believe that if, you know, you say no to the UFC, they don't just, well, there's one fight off your contract, you know, mm -hmm. who knows? So you, you see them do whatever they want. And I wasn't trying to burn any bridges. Right. I was just trying to fight as much as possible, whoever I could fight. And I lost two really stupid fights and, you know, it is what it is, but, uh, Hopefully I'll get it back and I'll go on and do better things, but uh, my leg is way better. Way well, that's better. good. Well, it's good to hear that you've recovered. That su that sucks. And I wasn't even going to bring this up, but now I'm kind of interested. And if you don't want to answer, <laughs> I totally understand. This was a question I was actually going to say for a later podcast with Ashley Evan Smith. Um, what are your thoughts? And it, again, you don't have to answer this if you don't want it. What are your thoughts about? And this is kind of an in the past too. The Fallon Fox incident of a transgender woman fighting in MMA. Uh, you know, obviously born a man has, as Joe Rogan said, a man's structure, bone density, etc. Um, do you think that's okay? Would you take a fight knowing that if they were a professional fighter that was professionally trained? Uh, I think you're a little crazy, so you might do it. Um, I would definitely do it. Would you really? Well, they offered me, and then they offered me 500 show, 500 to win, and I said, go oh, suck wow. one, because that's fucking crazy. First of all, it's a dude, and I, I know Fallon... I don't think Fallon likes me just for things that I've said, but I, I just am a believer. I'm not against anybody sexual orientation or whatever they want to do with their life. But I think, uh, when you're at that level and you grow up as a man and you form your bones and your muscles and all that, and you reach a certain age that you can't take that back. I don't care if you get a sex change or not. You can't take that back. Right. Cause so, puberty and already. then people are like, well, girls if girls transition to boy or boys should be able to play girls sports if girls can come in to play boys sports well boys are a little bit of step ahead on every sport they're faster they're stronger it's just a fact of life that's why mm -hmm. boys don't play girls sports but if a girl can compete with the boys why not but the boys coming down it's like it's like going down and playing against a bunch of girls you right. know like come on come on it was it was like when annika and then did, and and then how shady they were about not her manager first of all yeah. what a piece of shit to not to go and promote him like Hey, this is a new chick. On, she's knocking bitches out and shit. Right. But, you know, after all that stuff and Ashley fought her down in Florida or whatever it was and mm -hmm. won that fight, um, which I think Florida's a bunch of pussies for commissioners for letting that happen. They right. should have stopped right. it. That they lied. I mean, they lied to even get on the card. Well, the, the promoter let it go, too. So I Yeah, mean, I just think, it. what a bunch of bitches, dude. Yeah. Um, so I think that, uh, you know, she did really good. But to win, to go and win that, and then turn around and, like, try to get this this girl, Fallon, to, like, fight all these girls, and they're offering 500 bucks a pop. And then they're hitting people that I know don't have any choice. They want to fight. Mm -hmm. But they – then they go take that fight, and then it's, a, like, a career ender. For 500 bucks, dude, get out of here. Yeah, I know she – I'll uh, fight that dude, but I want money. Yeah, I, I, fight that dude. I know <laughs> – yeah, I know she had cracked somebody's skull, and, yeah, I was I was pretty – and, actually, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's one of the reasons I got fired from Bleacher Report is because I refused to put her in the – her, him in the whatever the – whatever, in the women's rankings. And I, yeah. I'm like, how, how am I the only one that thinks it's fucked up on the website? And yeah. the guy's giving me shit, and I'm just like, dude, like – you, you guys preach protect women and then a, a guy who transitioned fought a woman and i called it out for saying it's bullshit because i don't want to see women get hurt by people that are physically imposing yeah. and i'm the and, asshole. and during the time that you're saying that you like letting people think that you're just a woman with the same kind of build as all the other women i think, I, 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 i'm not against anything but that's fucked up i think that's the biggest problem is it wasn't disclosed yeah. after like i think the first two fights and that's fucked up. That's really fucked yeah. up. You know. Yeah. You know, if you're mad at here's the thing, and and this may not be the most politically correct. If you're mad at dudes that fight on steroids, you have to be mad when somebody doesn't disclose that they were formerly a man because it, it's not steroids, but again, their body structure is just different. Mm -hmm. you can just look at her. I mean, just to, just the jaw yeah. line is is. I mean, everyone's got a manlier jaw than I do, but yeah. <laughs> it's more manly than, you know, the people you're fighting. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, uh, I, I can't wait to ask Ashley that question when she comes on the show. Um, just to transition real quick before, before we talk about UFC 249, then I'll let you go have your tacos and, and all that good stuff. Um, side jobs in MMA. It's kind of, it's been a topic that's kind of been hot and cold, but it was brought up recently. Um, you know, a lot of fighters do have side jobs. I believe you've had a side job. I would if I'm not mistaken, most of your career, if not all of it. Uh, so can you just kind of talk about having a side job and also being a full-time MMA fighter? 
Yeah, I mean, I just sell sex, but like sex skills. So I just sell those, but no, no, no. I'll Venmo you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, man. I just do. I've done construction forever, so because it's one of those jobs you can come and go, and if you need to take six weeks off for training camp or eight weeks off, you can do it. If I need to get off early or whatnot, I can. You know what I mean? It's one of those jobs where they're not as strict on you. So um, I've always done that. But, you know, I my last camp uh, when I fought in Sweden uh, against what's her name? I can't remember her name. Yeah, yeah, her. So I was working in the oil field, <clears throat> and I only got four weeks off. I had to take a hitch off. So I got my two weeks off, and then I took the next hitch off, which was two weeks of work. And um, – so I got four weeks to train for that fight, and I cut 35 pounds. Oh, wow. It was a, so the whole, you know, training camp was cutting weight. Like, I couldn't have a single workout where I wasn't wearing a sauna suit, so I was never getting a really good workout. I was sure. dying, pretty much, you know. So it's just one of those things where it's just shitty situations. And, you know, it's a great job and stuff, but at the end of the day, I, I sacrificed, you know, time to train and time to prepare that I needed to, you know, so. Yeah. Now, do you think that fighters who, I guess – for back, lack of a better word, complain about fighters having to have these two different lives of going to your nine to five and then training. Do you think they have a plausible complaint there? I know, I, and I'm not going to blast any fighters by name, but a lot of them are like, why should we be having to work two jobs just to make ends meet? What do you, what do you think about the fighters that say things like that? Well, this ain't just like a normal career. It ain't like, Hey, I, I think I want to be an athlete for my career or, you know, or like a, you know, accountant or something it ain't like a normal job. You have to be elite to be a high level athlete getting paid. So that's not everybody. Everybody can go work at fucking McDonald's. Everybody can't be a professional athlete. So I think the time you put in, whether it be, you know, MMA or football or whatever your sport is, you put that time in, you know what I mean? Everybody puts that time in and that sacrifice in to get where they want to be. I, I just, uh, a bunch of whiny bitches is what I think we're talking about, right? <laughs> I, I, don't I mean, I wish I had sponsors and shit to pay me and I could not work and just go work out. That'd make life great, you know, but it just is not that way. And, you know, lucky for people that, that have that. You know, I know a bunch of guys that their parents have quite a bit of money and they've never had to pay for shit. They get to travel all over the country, all over the world, train with the best guys and, and just fight. And I'm like, man, what a lucky ass dude. Right. But he probably ain't fucking talented enough to be a world champion. So, you know, right. he just got lucky. But no, I'm not, And again, I'm not going to name any names. I, I, listen, I name a, a, a ton of fighters that I call out, <laughs> but I'm not going to do it on this show. I'm not going to name any name, but this motherfucker right here. Yeah, but there was a, an, I think most people can probably figure out who I'm talking about. There was a, a woman on the UFC roster. She was making, I believe, 30 to show and 30 to win. She was complaining about her pay, and I had just made the question. I got yeah, but we only people. we only fight like so. I've been only fighting once a year, and if you lose that fight, so then what they take out of that thirty k is certain amount for whatever sure. whatever they take out, and then the taxes they take out on top of that, mm -hmm. state taxes come right out, and then you turn around and you pay your manager, and your manager get paid off of your whole base pay, not mm -hmm. off of what was subtracted already. Then you pay your quarterman the same kind of deal. Next thing you know. You're, you just had a fight and you made eight grand or five grand and it took months to get ready and then you won't fight for months, you know what I mean? Or if at the rest of the year. So it sucks. I mean, it, it really is shitty if you break it all down that way. Um, but people look at it and they're like, oh, she made 30 grand or she made 60 grand. Well, I mean, twice twice as much if you make 60 grand is gone too. But right. if I'm only fighting once a year, that ain't very much fucking money, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Especially yeah. if I lose a fight. And the, the woman in question I'm talking about fought, I think, at least three times the one year she complained. But she was uh, she was making 30 show, 30 win. But my question was, and I made this question, and, of course, all the hysterical MMA media pussies, because that's what they are, the <laughs> pussies. Uh, I used to be one of them, but I wasn't a huge pussy. I was just a kind of a pussy. <laughs> uh, they said, uh, you know... Well, what, you know, I said thirty grand a show. I said, "What did you draw, though? You know, what was what? What did you draw in 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 audience? What did you bring that actually warranted you to get a well? We'll say sixty, and maybe you get a fight night bonus of fifty. You know, say say you do win the fight and you won sixty grand. Did you draw sixty thousand dollars worth of eyes? That's the only it. Ain't about that though. It's about the content in total. It's the content in total, and I'm not gonna watch the same fighters fight over and over and over. I mean, some people will because they're just wheel lickers or whatever they just love ufc or love whatever but at the end of the day like you want to feel that content and we're the lowest paid like 
come on, compared to all these other professional sports, and we're beating the shit out of each other. I'm not right. saying anything. I mean, I will fight for the same amount of money to beat the shit out of somebody else. I don't care. But we definitely don't get paid enough compared to what UFC is making. If they can buy for four and a half billion, and then a year or two later they're worth seven billion, get the hell out of here. Like they paid thirteen percent of their total revenue to to the fighters all year. Like what the fuck? Like <laughs> there's like come yeah. on, man. We are we like the fighters are your content. You know, right. I, whether I bring enough money, enough people to cover my expenses or not. When I fought for Invicta, I sold a shit ton of tickets. I don't know if any of the other girls sold tickets really or anything, but when we fight in Kansas City, it's like my hometown. So I sell a shit ton of tickets just because I want to feel the arena and I, people want to come see me and it is what it is. But do I sell as much tickets as, you know, they're paying me in, in purse? Probably not. But at the end of the day, when you're talking about the people that tune in to watch me or the people that all this other th stuff and, and then, you know, I, I, I sell cards. So I think it, it works out. And I don't think that's a necessarily a bad thing. I think like the, the profit sharing aspect where, you know, I know there was an Invicta card that I bought tickets for my friend because I had media, but I was staying with him in Kansas City. I said, hey, uh -huh. I'll stay with you. I'll buy your tickets. There was an option that says, who are you coming to see? And there was a drag down menu and I picked the person I was, that I was in contact with. And I think there's like almost like a profit sharing, like a ticket. You thing. didn't pick Tanya Evinger? I was honestly just going to say, I just <laughs> actually found the press pass. Uh, Invicta 14, Tanya Evinger versus Pani Kianzad. I was sitting ringside for that. So I was there. I was at one of your fights. I didn't, I thought it was just one that you were, um, that you were just you just showed up at and you know like a tornado but you know i, uh, I that was an easy fight because i fought a turd so <laughs> you're not a fan of her well she just talked a lot of real sh a lot of uh, shit before we fought and we had to do a podcast together one time i forget who did it but they wanted us on together i'm like this oh, is so wow. stupid i already know who it was it was adam hunter so oh, adam uh, gets us on yeah. together and uh yeah and then she started talking like trying to be funny and perverted and like talking like kind of being a smart ass to me and i'm like but shut up like you're not <laughs> i'm gonna beat you up when we when we fight i'm gonna beat you up <laughs> uh, yeah i met a, i met adam in orange county uh, he was cool yeah he's a cool dude uh, yeah he's a cool dude so just to kind of end that before we go to ufc 249 do you think it's a problem that fighters have side jobs in mma do you think that or do you think that it, you know a lot of people in life have to have two jobs and then you know i think if they don't have side job they're stupid because your career for this sport in general is just so your window's so small if you aren't putting all your money into something else like you're you're definitely missed the bus because yeah. it's going to end and then you're going to have nothing and right. i feel like now like man, when am I going to ever retire? And how do I retire? Do I just like one day be like, eh, I don't want to fight again. I think it would, I don't think it'd ever be like that. It'd be like, oh, I don't ever want to train again in my life. You know what I mean? Yeah, like right. that, I can see that happening or work out again in my life. But to say, I don't ever want to fight again. I just can't even imagine having a time where I could actually think that except for when I'm cutting weight. Every time I cut weight, I'm like, <laughs> tell my coaches, this is the last fucking time guys. This is the last time I hate all y'all. This is the last time. <laughs> It's like I'm having a baby and they're they're yeah. the baby daddy and I'm like going through it. I'm like, don't ever, we're never ever again doing this. <laughs> we're not doing this again until the next. Yeah, time. you son of a bitch, <laughs> you tricked me again. Uh, so you know, but um, then as soon as it's over, I'm like, yeah, let's get another one. <laughs> well, so it's just, just one of those things, but I don't yeah, know. I always just ask because I was a teacher for five years and I had three jobs and. That's from a guy who thinks that teachers are overpaid. A lot of teachers are overpaid. So yeah, uh, I've, I'm very in the minor in that, but I was actually a teacher. So I think my opinion matters a little bit more. Yeah. Like, I think your yeah. opinion matters more with MMA. So yeah. Uh, now let's move on to the UFC 249 before we get out of here. I know you had kind of said before you knew some of it, but there was so much moving pieces that you don't, you know, you weren't a hundred percent sure what was going on. So let's right. just go over the main card. I'll give you the main five fights. You can kind of tell me, you know, what you think of those fights. If, you know, if you don't have an opinion, of course, you know, I'll just uh, tell you my opinion. Uh, and then, you know, we can, uh, we can sign out. <laughs> and we'll this. agree on that because if I don't know, we'll just go with yours. <laughs> All right. Like what he said. We're cheering like, for who he I'll said. I'll be on Twitter like, fucking Tanya agreed with me. Yeah. She didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. I'll be like, I'll yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the opener on the main card features NF former NFL star Greg Hardy, who um, – has surprised a lot of people. He actually has won some fights. Uh, taking on Jorgen DeCastro. Is that that, black, that big black dude? That dude, yeah. The big black dude who played on the Cowboys and the Carolina Panthers. And he the actually, wait, the same dude that beat his wife? 
Uh, that's what the alleged uh, thing was. Uh, we, don't have a, we don't have a That's the only way I know him. <laughs> we don't have a bankroll to say whether he did or not to get sued, but that right, was the right, alleged right. Uh, thing that happened, yes. I think he also, like, he was like John Jones. He liked Coke, and then he started fighting, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know if you know a bunch the about gateway. this fight. The gateway to <laughs> fighting. Yeah, now, that's, now I know how John Jones always <laughs> makes weight. He's always on Coke. Yeah, uh, <laughs> dude's ahead of the game. Right. So I don't know if you know a whole lot about Jorgen DeCastro. He's, a, he's got a kickboxing background. Uh, I believe he works uh, security at a school. Uh, but two, two very big guys going at it. I don't know if you have an opinion on this fight, but what do you expect to see out of Greg Hardy, Jorgen DeCastro? Well, Greg's really powerful and shit. Huh? Like, I don't know, man. I don't know the other dude, to be honest. Yeah, DeCastro, I uh, believe, is coming off a win. He knocked out uh, Justin Tafa, whose brother Junior is in glory kickboxing. They're both big guys. Uh, Greg Hardy. Oh, they're, they have a stand-up background, huh? Yep. And uh, and DeCastro actually knocked him out. I remember watching that fight. I was half in the Greg bag. doesn't have a wrestling background, huh? No, Greg has a football background. Uh, yeah. He's gone to, yep. He, but he's six foot five, two sixty five. If I'm not mistaken, he cuts to make two sixty five. So he's he's a yeah. big guy. Obviously, I don't think there's too many guys that are going to be better athletes in the pure athletes in the octagon than him. Obviously, learning on the job. But I think this will be an interesting fight. I don't think it'll. Now's go to the, the time judges. to learn wrestling for him. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you want to stay away from another You better boxer, get off your yeah. feet. So I don't know what your thought on it. I, I'm taking Jorgen DeCastro. I'm like, doing – go ahead. Please, no, please, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm, I'm listening to what you say oh, first. Oh, sure. I'm going to take Jorgen DeCastro by knockout. He does have a kickboxing background. And, and while Hardy's a very good striker for a guy with his level of fighting, um, you're taking on a guy that's a career – not a career, but a, who has been doing kickboxing a much longer time. I agree. I agree. Although, anytime we're talking about heavyweights or anything, I'm like, whoever falls on top is going to win. Yep. Well, it's, <laughs> and that's the other thing with the guys that. That's in wrestling. I'm like, I don't know, but whoever falls on top. Absolutely. That's and, and the thing with heavyweights, too, especially two heavyweights that are wild, it, it might, sometimes it's just whoever lands the first shot wins mm -hmm. because they're so just such big powerful guys you know mm -hmm. uh, I, wrestling was such a weird sport i would just, i would just watch them i'm like please get the first take that please fall on top because they'd all just grab hold of each other and stumble around stumble around until somebody fell on each other and i was like please land on top well what's hilarious, <laughs> what's hilarious about this card is for you know for a main card with five fights you know that has a olympic gold medalist and dominic cruz who is also a very good wrestler mm -hmm. i don't know how the wrestling is going to happen on this card so we yeah. have a second fight it's a featherweight bout between jeremy stevens who is one of my absolute favorite fighters of all time that mm -hmm. dude just goes to work. Taking on Calvin Qatar, who has really come out of nowhere and just beaten some really good guys. Um, you know, I'm a huge Jeremy Stevens fan, but this, I think, is a lot closer of a fight than you think. Uh, Where's Qatar, the other guy out of? Uh, Qatar fights out of Sitya Dong, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Team Sitya Dong in Boston. Uh, he has wins over Ricardo Lamas, who, if you remember, challenged uh -huh. for the UFC featherweight title. Uh, you know, wins over Andre Feely from Team Alpha Male, Shane Burgos, who's a top 15 UFC fighter. So he has some big wins. His only losses come to uh, Renato Mocano, uh, the Brazilian who actually moved up to lightweight recently, and then Zabit Magomed Sharapov, who is a who's probably, in my opinion, the next featherweight champion. So those are the only two losses he has in the UFC. Uh, any opinion on this Stevens Qatar fight? I'm going with Stevens. I'm going to take Stevens too, but I'm biased because he is my favorite fighter. Uh, he just did get beat by Yair uh, Rodriguez. But, I mean, he's another one of those guys. We were just talking about the heavyweights, one punch, one knockout. I mm -hmm. think Stevens is one of those guys that has just so much raw power that you can yeah. be beating him up, and then he'll just land one big shot, and it's yeah, over. Yeah, yeah. And Qatar will more than likely stand with him because he's another guy that has very good striking himself. He's a little more technical, whereas Stevens is more of a one punch, one kill guy. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 I well. He might just pick them apart, yeah, run and, and pick. And it could be a fight of the night contender if it yeah. wasn't for the main event, probably. But yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to the third fight, we got two more after this, the heavyweights. Uh, if you don't watch MMA and watch this guy and love him just from what he does, Francis Ngannou is fighting one of my favorite knockouts of all time against Alice mm -hmm. Rogan, taking on Jair Zinho Rosenstruck. Uh, who actually beat over him himself, but he did it in you know the last round after getting dominated. I mean, do you think this fight goes to a decision, or is this just two guys throwing until one falls? Yeah, that's. I don't think it'll go to a decision. Who do you got in this one? Um, not the second guy. What's it? How do you say his name? And you don't like Rosenstruck, you like Ngannou. 
Yeah, yeah. What Rose? What's his name? Rosenstruck. Yeah, Rosenstruck. Yeah. Yeah, Rosenstruck has a kickboxing background. And God, maybe it's because I don't know him. Maybe he did just beat Overeem though. So. Oh, did he? But yeah, come on, Overeem for me, for me seems so up and down. Like. Yeah, he has had. He's lost that. some fights that I'm like, what the fuck. I remember. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think when he was on the juice, he was unstoppable, and then they like started mm-hmm. testing him and shit. But. You know, Overeem obviously is one of the. It greatest. might just be all in his head. He needs that extra. Ah, you know, uh, steroids, or as he calls it, horse meat. Uh, yeah, I remember when that they were saying he was eating horse meat. He eats horse meat. Yeah, I was like, cool. <laughs> I was like, cool. I eat a lot of shit that's not normal, but I don't have you know <laughs> muscles that go out to here. You know, so I'm gonna also take Francis and Ganu in this one. Yeah. The dude is just way too destructive with his hands. Uh, like I said, his a knockout of Overeem himself was probably one of the most disturbing. Not it was a one punch uppercut, and I'm surprised Overeem's head didn't end up in the back of the fucking arena. That yeah, was bad. That, huh? um, going to the co-main events, we're on the uh, the home stretch here. You got Henry Seudo, the champion of the bantamweight division, taking on late notice the former champion Dom Cruz, who is as my esteemed colleague Keith Schillen cannot stop saying on our weekly show has not fought in three years. Um, you know, you probably know about these guys. They're both high profile. What do you see in this fight? Um, I think Henry's going to win. I think that he's just going to get a hold of Dom and slow him down. That's what I think is going to happen. I think that, I think Dom's real slick. He hasn't fought in a long time, but that don't really mean shit. I agree. I mean, that's a, this is the first time I've seen him where he ain't injured. Come on. <laughs> right, I know. He's just coming off another major injury, but... Yeah, dude, do, he gets injured more, do, do more you than see anybody. You, I don't know how he's got... How he has money. Like, how do you go that long without fighting? Well, he's a Fox analyst, so I'm sure... Yeah, yeah, that, that don't Fox count. Money. Do you he's see, got that good... Do you he got see, that good good. Yeah. <laughs> do you see Sayudo mostly using his wrestling, or do you think, you know, does he mix it up, or does he... I think Henry's fighting? getting real confident in his stand-up, but to... I don't know because TJ did so good against uh, Dom. Maybe he thinks that he can strike that well, but I just don't see Henry as that great of a striker compared to Dom. Yeah, I think Dom's going to be a little bit more unorthodox, moving around slicker, a little bit slicker, but I don't think he's going to be fast as Henry. Yeah. I don't think he's going to be as powerful as Henry. I think Henry's just going to grab a hold of him and slow him down. Just not... Not because he can't, but I think because he hasn't fought in so long, you know. Maybe, and you know, Dom is, a lot of his game is contingent on him being super uh, fluid in his movements, and he moves around a lot. He does that ballerina shit with the light feet yeah. moving around. But Sayudo, I mean, he, he he's the real deal. I think and Henry's going to pressure in until mm-hmm. he gets a hold of him. I think if Dom can keep him running, he might be able to do something and get his hands hands going and stuff, but... I don't think Henry's going to let that. He's going to close in and be. Henry's on that other stuff, too, you know, that they can't get in the testing. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing. Cruz, Cruz is not a one-shot guy. He's he's the guy yeah. that kills you with a 1,000 stabs. You uh-huh. know? So it's going to be tougher with Sayudo, I think, especially with three years on the shelf. I'm yeah, yeah. to see it, though, because I used to hate Dom Cruz, and I actually li- I can respect a lot what he does now. So Yeah. Um, going into our last fights. We have, I believe it's an interim lightweight championship between Tony uh, Turd Ferguson and uh, <laughs> just, Justin Gaethje. Uh, you know, this was originally supposed to be Habib's fight, and obviously we had issues with travel and the COVID and then moving the cards around. And now The fight's Ramadan. never going to happen. Right, and now it's We're Ramadan. just leading this up for years till it's the biggest fight of UFC right. history, and the right. bonuses are $60,000. Right. <laughs> And Fuck it's Ramadan, too, so Habib's fasting, so there's no way he's fighting until Ramadan's over. Um, yeah. But you have two guys who are pretty goddamn reckless, That which is why they're great fighters. I think this will be the fight of the night while it lasts. Uh, there's some other great – I think Cerrone Pettis will be outstanding. There will be some really good fight. This card is fucking stacked. I have no problem yeah. having it. Yeah. Uh, Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje, what are your thoughts on it? Man, that's a hard one. Tony, to me, is like one of them people that I watch fight and – I don't know how he gets away with all this shit. Like, dude, dude is like, oh, they're him and Pettis's fight was badass, dude. Like, they were like two kids out there fucking playing, you know, with a lot of blood. Yeah. But you know, but like, goddamn, they just do the stupidest shit to get out of stuff and do stuff. And I feel like Tony's like that. He just does things. He doesn't like, like, oh shit, I'm not gonna roll out of this somersault out of this fucking. <laughs> takedown because he's going to catch me on the ground and you know he, he like it's like he doesn't think about the the 
No, he just fights. The dangers, the dangers of what he's doing and, and how he could get caught or whatever. So he's really, he's really like surprising to me. Like, you know, I, he, I'm always like, dude, he's going to get beat this time. And then the dude just, I don't understand it. He just is, he's whack. I don't know. But Gaethje is a, a beast. Yeah. Gage, a beast. Gage. This is, a, this is for him. Like, in my opinion, like, dude, he wins this fight. That's going to like jump his career. Like, yeah. not like he ain't got a career already. Right. He's got a great career, but like, it's going to, I think, you know, he's come up and down. He's had some up and downs. Yeah. But, and you know, the crazy thing was he was originally rumored to fight Conor McGregor at some point. So he, if that's true, he, I heard that up, too. he gave up a lot of money to take this fight so that he must assume that the title will bring him his riches. Hey, I think, I think him being this fight though, like it's going to be what, what's going to get him the Conor fight. You know, I think he's just going well, for the money, but well, if he wins, here's he gets your, the Habib here's fight. It's a big boy because, step. Yeah, but if he wins, he gets the Habib fight because Habib's the the champion. He would be the interim champ, so which would be a big money fight too. But you know, I, everyone knows that Connor's the big money fight. It doesn't matter who it is, you know. Um, yeah. So I, I so are you Connor. taking Ferguson or Justin? I want to fight. I'm I'm taking. Uh, fuck, I'm taking Ferguson just because he's so unorthodox. Because I think he can. He can run enough from. Justin. Yeah, I think this is a crapshoot. I'm going to take Ferguson because he's had more notice. I know, you know, Gaethje, when he originally took the fight, was on short notice, and this is still shorter notice than a guy who's had a full fight camp. I'm yeah. going to go Ferguson just because of that reason. But, again, this is one of those fights where, you know, you leave your chin out there one second too long, you know, you're, you're looking up at the ceiling and wondering what the fuck just happened. Yeah, so. I don't think it's short notice or not with, with Justin. I think that that's it. Like, I've had fights like that, too. I'm like, oh, my God, I haven't trained in a whole year. But they're paying me cash money, so let's try to knock this bitch out in the first round. Yeah, because <laughs> that's that literally win all I got. But I think that's how he fights every round. You know what I mean? Yeah, like absolutely. So, so I think he's got a good chance, whether he's had like a crazy camp or not. The dude's in shape. Sure, absolutely, and and that's uh, another reason why I like Gagey. I know he trains year round, so he's ready. But I just think Ferguson. You know, he was preparing for Habib, who is hands down the toughest guy right now. So he's been preparing for him for years now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we've, we've, yeah, we've been waiting for years. So yeah, cancellation after cancellation. <laughs> All right, Tanya, I will let you go. I know it's Cinco de Mayo. You got tacos coming. Your looks like you were drinking a Corona during the show. Uh, before we let you go, uh, any message for the fans or uh, anywhere they can follow you, anything like that? Go ahead. Ah, uh, yeah, just my social media. My numbers are still the same, so I'm not losing fans. But. Uh, yeah, I put I put funny shit up every once in a while. So just my social media is probably where you're gonna find me. I think I'm looking to fight at uh, Bellator this um, oh, great. summer, but maybe it won't be till next summer. I guess. <laughs> we'll see. Right? <laughs> this shit's crazy, but um, yeah, you know, I I'd like to uh, get back at it as soon as possible. So. Sure, and you're healthy, as you said, and we're happy to hear that. And mm -hmm. again, if you guys don't know, especially Twitter, and, and she hasn't been as active lately, but she's got some funny shit. It's at time. I hate Hammer. social media, and people on there are boring. Every time I'm on the same shit, I don't give a shit about their lives and their crap. Oh, uh, if you want to see Let's people. Just post, if we just post funny shit, I'd be all right, but everybody yeah, posts their personal I, I, crap. I, I do that and shit on MMA journalists, so that, that's why my <laughs> Twitter is halfway decent. So Yeah, I want to hear, like, shit talking. And funny shit, <laughs> not all this other bullshit. I don't want to see it. Yeah, it's yeah, it's getting crazy. So. It's getting old. All right, Tanya, thank you very much for your time. Uh, again, you were the first ever guest on this podcast. I'm uh, I'm a, I'm recording next week's episode this week <laughs> as well. So you have the distinction of being number one on the shooting the shit podcast here on the Loudmouth MMA Network. Make sure you guys check out Loudmouth MMA Network for all the good shows, including the ones that I'm on where I constantly get last place in the debate shows because I don't give a fuck. <laughs> so uh, for Tanya Evinger, I'm Riley Contact for the Loudmouth MMA Network. So this has been shooting the shit and go fuck yourselves. <laughs> Thanks for having me on.